Taking the twelve aside, he said to them, Now we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that has been written by the prophets about the Son of Man is to come true. They took a colt, and throwing their garments over its back, they helped Jesus on it. As he moved off, people spread their cloaks in the road, and now, as he was approaching the downward slope of the Mount of Olives, the whole group of disciples joyfully began to praise God at the top of their voices for all the miracles they had seen. They cried out, Blessings on the King who comes, in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Shopping and hawking, purchasing and vending their wares, the observant noticed, the indifferent paid no mind. The powerful, perturbed by all the noise, make their way to confront and charge the man some call anointed. Loud and raucous singing disturbs the quiet of the status quo. Those who should be seen and not heard are making the utmost clamour, appreciated by some, angering others, insisting they turn the volume down. Boulders will sing, while trees will give their branches to welcome the mighty, if the lowliest of participants are muzzled by the powerful. But they sing in applause, an affront to the self-made mighty. Shaking off the winter greys and waving springtime green, a shout welcomes the anointed one. Thrown off fashion lines, the path covering eager rocks, postponing the clearing of their throats. Join the cavalcade and raise the benediction. Awaken the sleeping alleluias and the slumbering hosannas. Join the lowliest of the low and applaud the highest of the high. But beware, the shoppers are eager to buy, even if the cost is high, and the hawkers are ready to sell their merchandise. Satan entered Judas, who was numbered among the twelve. He went to the chief priests and the officers of the guard to discuss a scheme for handing Jesus over to them. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He accepted and looked for an opportunity to betray him. Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper. He was at dinner when a woman came in with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the ointment on his head. Some who were there said to one another indignantly, why this waste of ointment? Ointment like this could have been sold for over 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. They were angry with her. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you upsetting her? What she has done for me is one of the good works. What she has done will be told in remembrance of her. When the hour came, he took his place at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I've longed to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Because I tell you, I shall not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then, taking a cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and share it among you. Because from now on, I tell you, I shall not drink wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took some bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which will be given up for you. Do this as a memorial of me. He did the same with the cup after supper, and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which will be poured out for you. You can't wash someone else's feet with one hand. You've got to let go of everything and bend down and set to with both hands, as Jesus did at the Last Supper. 
as Jesus did when he abandoned everything and gave his life away for us. Lord, you humble yourself. You bow down like a servant. You give yourself away for us. Teach us to learn from you, how to love, how to hold nothing back, how to give ourselves. Fill us with that spirit of yours, that spirit of loving and serving all our brothers and sisters sincerely, without counting the cost. They came to a small estate called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Stay here while I pray. And he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep awake. And going on a little further, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, this hour might pass him by. Judas, one of the twelve, came up with a number of men armed with swords and clubs sent by the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the traitor had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss, he had said, he is the man. Take him in charge. And see he is well guarded when you lead him away. So when the traitor came, he went straight up to Jesus and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Pilate summoned the chief priests and the leading men and the people. He was anxious to set Jesus free and address the people, but they shouted back, Crucify him. Why? What harm has this man done? I have found no case against him that deserves death. So I shall have him punished and then let him go. But they kept on shouting at the top of their voices, demanding that he should be crucified. Their shouts were growing louder. Pilate then gave his verdict. Their demand was to be granted. And he handed Jesus over to them to deal with as they pleased. The sin of Pilate, cowardice and political time serving. The sin of Caiaphas, spiritual pride and ecclesiastical time serving. The sin of the soldiers and the crowd. Brutality, the lust for blood and blind following the majority. These sins are not museum specimens, impaled on pins in glass cases, to be examined at leisure by those interested in religion. Strange reactions of long ago, people in faraway places. No, far from it. They are the sins of Acacia Avenue and Laburnum Grove. Neat, semi-detached sins of respectable citizens living in respectable rows. The sins of the milkman and the neighbour who borrows your mower, and the man who sits next to you on the 815. The sins of ordinary people going daily to ordinary jobs and returning by six to unspectacular homes and wives. Your sins and my sins. The sins of the children of our various parents the sins of the man in your shaving mirror. It is these, the penny plain treacheries of John Citizen and his unglamorous wife, which flame in the heat of the moment and flare to the sudden murder of God. With him, they also led out two other criminals to be executed. When they reached the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, the two criminals also, one on the right, the other on the left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. About the sixth hour, with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn right down the middle, 
And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. A member of the council arrived, an upright and virtuous man named Joseph from Arimathea, a Jewish town, and he lived in the hope of seeing the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a shroud, and put him in a tomb which was hewn in stone, in which no one had yet been laid. In Mary's house the mourners gather, sorrow pierces them like a nail. Whereas Mary herself, meanwhile, gone to comfort Judas's mother. On the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, they went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb, but on entering, discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared by their side. Terrified, the women lowered their eyes. But the two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He is risen. Remember what he told you when he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man had to be handed over into the power of sinful men and be crucified, and rise again on the third day? And they remembered his words. When the women returned from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the others. The women were Mary of Magdala, Joanna, and Mary the mother of James. The other women with them also told the apostles. But this story of theirs seemed pure nonsense, and they did not believe them. <laughs> 